Wherever there are laws, there are lawbreakers, and professional golf is no exception. You'd expect the pros to treat the rulebook with more respect, but they aren't exactly beyond cutting corners like the everyday golfer. And as much as we hate it and those who do it, cheating is a phenomenon in life as it is in sports. Vijay Singh Take Vijay Singh for example. In what looked like a failed attempt at hypnosis, Singh was caught lowering his score by a stroke to make the cut. It's alright to be a little confused if this is news to you. After all, Singh is one of the most decorated players in the history of the PGA Tour. He's the winner of three major championships, not to mention his beastly 2004 when he won nine tournaments and reached number one in the official world golf ranking. As you might have rightly guessed it, the legend of the disappearing stroke happened many years before Singh became the big Fijian on the PGA Tour. He was a struggling 22-year-old pro golfer at the 1985 Indonesian Open, and he was having a poor outing. At the end of the second round, he was one stroke short of the cut line. At least, the officials thought he was. However, when Singh turned in his scorecard for approval, it was a shot lower than expected. How? The dumbfounded officials had a lot of questions in their heads. It was like watching a live magic show, except they knew the gimmick better than the magician. Singh was found guilty of improving his score and an Indonesian Golf Association official disqualified him from the Indonesian Open. For the same crime, the Southeast Asian Golf Federation later suspended him indefinitely from what is now the Asian Tour. Around the same time, the Australian Tour also banned him for some financial misdeed. To put it lightly, Singh's career wasn't singing a sweet song. And to support himself, he had to spend two years as a club pro on the island of Borneo before returning to pro golf. Nobody likes being called a cheat, and you'd wonder why such an inglorious title is not more coveted. You know, if the cap fits, why wouldn't you want to wear it? Probably because it's a tattered felt hat from the bottom of the dump. So, expectedly, VJ has spent his career denying the allegations of cheating, calling the old scandal a misunderstanding. But contrary to his position, the players who witnessed the whole thing begged to differ. Two years before Singh's scandal, an isolated rule violation sparked a feud between two of golf's greatest players, Gary Player. In 1983, Tom Watson cried foul about something Gary Player did at the inaugural Skins game. That year, the two played alongside Jack Nicklaus and Arnold Palmer for a first-of-its-kind $360,000 purse. And according to Watson, the game was fun until player violated a fundamental golf rule at the 16th hole. He claimed he saw player pressing down a leaf directly behind his ball to clear his club's path, but when confronted, player strongly denied any wrongdoing. New York Times writer Dave Anderson reported their on-course argument. He wrote, From 30 feet away, Tom Watson could be heard saying, I'm accusing you, Gary. You can't do that. I'm tired of this. I wasn't watching you, but I saw it. Gary Player could be heard defending himself, saying at one point, I was within the rules. Talking about the rules, if Player had truly done as Watson said, then he had violated a cardinal golf rule. Rule 9 in the modern rulebook requires golfers to play the ball as it lies. But Player would be right if the leaf he removed from the side of his ball was indeed a loose impediment. His action would be in line with Rule 15.1, which allows you to remove loose impediments on or off the course without penalty. But the truth seems obvious because the other players and Joe Day, the former PGA commissioner and rules referee for the day, had tried to keep a lid on the issue until Anderson wrote about it. Watson later confirmed the allegations in a statement released a day later. In it, he said, If we overlook the rules, then the game as we know it would become something much less than it is. My greatest regret, though, is that this private matter became a public incident. Also, Watson only won $10,000 of the pot, while Player took the top prize of $170,000. In Watson's words, pursuing the case would have felt like sour grapes. Surely even you are not a fan of sour grapes. Golf is largely a self-regulated sport. You're expected to honor an unwritten code of ethics, and a viewer believed this next golfer violated that code by tampering with her ball's position. Chela Choi Replacing the ball on its mark is a no-brainer. But Chela Choi made it look harder than it should have been at the 2014 Canadian Pacific Women's Open. She was aiming for a birdie on the 10th hole when her orange ball lipped out and rolled about two feet away from the hole. Choi walked over to the ball, placed a mark behind it, 
and lifted it off the ground by about two inches. But the way she replaced it was dubious, to say the least. From the video, she could be seen moving the ball from the right and placing it about an inch and a half forward to the left. Most observers missed it, except for one armchair referee. The TV viewer immediately phoned in and ratted Choi out to the officials who informed her of the infringement. But this only led to more drama. Even after the rules official showed Choi a video of her erratic ball movement, she rejected the two-shot penalty prescribed by the rules. She refused to sign her scorecard and withdrew from the tournament in protest. She was clearly in violation of Rule 14.2, and according to that rule, the penalty for playing incorrectly substituted ball or playing ball from a wrong place in breach of Rule 14.2 is the general penalty, aka two strokes in stroke play. Keep in mind that this happened before Lexi Thompson's incident at the 2017 ANA Inspiration, and even though Thompson's case was less evident, she accepted a four-stroke penalty, which cost her the major tournament. Choi must be thrilled not to have walked in David Robertson's shoes. No, they weren't a set of those red cartoon boots. The Scottish golfer was banned for 20 years for repeatedly replacing his ball incorrectly during a qualifier for the British Open in 1985. Yeah, that's golf's equivalent of exiling. And if you think Choi is a cheat, then you might need to coin a new word to describe this guy. Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed is more popular for being a serial cheat than winning the Masters in 2018, and that's due to his history of infidelity with golf rules. His penchant for cheating has earned him more foes than friends, and it goes back to his college days. During a qualifying round, Reed reportedly played a tee shot into the rough, then found another ball closer to the fairway and played it as his ball. This was before he was accused of stealing $400 cash and some other items. Eventually, his shady behaviors got him off the University of Georgia golf team and sealed his move to Augusta State. Then, there was the epic cheating in the waste bunker at the 2019 Hero World Challenge. In this installment of Cheating Golf, the golf world watched Reed cleverly use his practice wings to shave off the sand behind his ball. Kepka aptly described the act when he told the PGA's SiriusXM channel that Reed was building sandcastles in the sand. But those sandcastles are not as despicable as the crown of shame Reed wore at the 2023 Hero Dubai Desert Classic. In the third round, he struck a tee shot on the 17th hole that landed in a palm tree. Luckily for Reed, and unfortunately for golf, he was able to identify his ball and prevent a lost ball situation. This allowed him to take a drop as an unplayable ball penalty from below the tree. But the cheating was as clear as whatever Reed saw with the binoculars when he tried to identify his ball. The trees were clearly holding several golf balls, and none of them was surely Reed's. But while Reed had identified his ball on the tree closest to the hole, slow motion footage from Sky Sports showed that the ball had been lodged in the first tree closest to the tee. In a press conference after the round, Reed told Telegraph Report, I would have gone back to the tee if I wasn't 100%. I got lucky that we were able to look through the binoculars and you have to make sure it's your ball and how I mark my golf balls is I always put an arrow on the end of my line. Because the Pro V1, the arrow on the end stops before it so you could see the arrow. But according to Golf Channel analyst Brandel Chambly, the trees were likely littered with Titleist Pro V1 balls used by most pros, so it was easy to fool the referee. In the face of such convincing evidence, you'd expect a professional to show remorse, not read. The man is renowned for his ability to improve his lie, so he doubled down in a statement released on Twitter, saying some people love controversy. Well, are they all named Patrick Reed? He went further to say it was a non-issue and he wasn't asked to identify the tree his ball struck. The DP World Tour echoed his argument that he was only asked to identify his distinctive ball markings to confirm it was his ball. But still, how did he identify his distinctive ball markings on a ball on the wrong tree? Is it possible that Reed had thrown a ball into that tree in a previous competition? Or maybe someone else uses his distinctive ball markings? Reed is on course to be the Jane Blaylock of men's golf, and he's buried himself deep in that bunker. If you enjoyed this video about golf cheats, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. See you there!